right back. This is Boomer Life on Sea Isle 650. Hey, welcome back to the show. I'm Zach Spencer. You're listening to Boomer Life on CL650. And our guest is uh, audiologist Dr. Ted Venema. And uh, we are getting into all of the parts of the year and the different kind of hearing loss. We just want to uh, mention Next Gen Hearing. They have a 21-day introductory hearing aid listening experience. So you, you get the hearing devices, mm -hmm. and then you try them out for 21 days. Yep. And that you can make adjustments, I guess, in that 21 Yeah, days. we like to see people after a week of having tried the hearing aids come on back in the office. Do you have any questions? Is right. there any adjustments we need to make? Mm -hmm. La-di-da. Like well, as you were mentioning, they're digital. Yeah. So you can change the profile. Oh, yeah. Um, say, uh, this, I'm getting too much of this, too, uh, yep. too little of this. Yep. On the computer that way. It's mm -hmm. just we talk wired or, or wireless to the hearing aids. And then we see the person after two weeks. How are you doing? Come on in. Feel free anytime to come on in. And after three weeks, we see you again. And should you decide to pursue and continue, that's only when you'd pay. Right. And if you'd buy the hearing aids, then you still have an additional 69 days after the 21 days to continue trying the hearing aids, to continue coming in to see us when you when you need to or when you want to and only at the end of the total 90 days would you make a final decision as to whether you wanted to actually so there's a lot of upside them. and no oh, downside there's no downside i can't see how anyone would not do it especially if he or she was experiencing problems hearing i guess a lot of people put off going and getting tested because there's a cost associated yeah. with this right mm -hmm. and it's not insignificant so mm -hmm. for somebody it's an investment in their it is. in their lifestyle it is right yep. so yep. what do you say to that well you match costs and you match lifestyles basically i like to talk about hearing aids as having gold silver and bronze mm -hmm. you know there's different strokes for different folks some people want all the bells and whistles you don't need that some people want the bare bones. Well, be careful because the bare bones hearing aids won't work quite as well in background noise. Mm -hmm. Usually it's the mid-level hearing aids that are, that are chosen and that are most appropriate for the typical presbycusis, for typical trouble with treble hearing loss. Right. For typical Mrs. McGillicuddy who's having a bit of problems hearing her grandkids, check it out. So what is, what's the reaction? You go and you get the hearing aids, yeah. and you mentioned they can't pick up the S's and the Th's. And do mm -hmm. your do it again. <laughs> they can't. They have they have trouble hearing s sh sh t k the right. high pitched consonants. Right. So, so the hearing aids are deliberately amplifying more treble. Then. So when you put them in and they get out and they're sitting with yeah. their family yeah. and they feel part of the conversation, yeah. they maybe felt excluded in the past. Mm -hmm. What's the reaction? The reaction is usually eyes creasing or, or ri eyebrows raising and, and uh, usually people are quite delighted and it's usually the significant others who right. notice it more than anything else. Because that's tiring having to repeat yourself all the time. It is so and also uh, you know hearing loss affects relationships. It is, hearing is the only sense that necessarily involves somebody else. Mm -hmm. Unlike vision, Helen Keller said Vision loss cuts people off from things. Hearing loss cuts people off from other people. Mm -hmm. And it's a communicative sense. Speech and hearing are often studied together at universities. People get a master's degree in speech pathology or speech therapy or audiology, hearing, because the sense that the, the two are related. Hearing loss is a communicative sense, and it affects relationships hugely. And usually a significant other is the person who notices even more than the person who is wearing the hearing aids. Well, my father's 83, and mm -hmm. his hearing isn't, uh, well, I, if, I, I'm sure if I got him tested, he, would, he has issues. He's yeah. 83 years yeah. old. But most of the time, we, can, we have no problem, and I don't even really have to repeat myself no. that much. He's a low talker, so yeah. often I have to ask him because he doesn't speak very <laughs> loudly. Um, but I really notice it when the TV's on. Yeah. He's got that thing blaring. Sure, sure and he when is. he's at my house, he's uh -huh. always asking me to turn it up. Yeah. So I find that uncomfortable because yeah. I'm sitting watching the news or whatever, yeah. and it's too loud for yes. me. So yeah. that's uncomfortable for sure me. Sure it is. And, and hearing aids, by the way, BTW, hearing aids can also be programmed to work exclusively with the television. In other words, you could leave the television to a volume that you find comfortable, and the person's hearing aids can be programmed to communicate with that television wirelessly. Wow. So the person is hearing the TV through his or her hearing aids. Hmm. They call it streaming. Mm -hmm. So I mean that. So you you wouldn't even notice. You turn the TV up to where you like it. So it's kind of like having 
earbuds that yeah. that you can use. So if I if say somebody wanted to watch a movie on their yep. iPad, they could actually connect it to yep. the iPad, exactly. and, and you wouldn't even hear it. Exactly. But they would be hearing it. They would hear it as, as shaped or through their through the person's hearing aids. Wow. Yeah, customized sound. Now is that the the gold, the silver, or the bronze? That's I'm, that's all of them. Really? Yes. Wow. That's it's this is that's what we're that's why people. Hearing loss is so invisible, and the public usually knows so little that can be done about it. And it, the, the, today, the possibilities are quite myriad, quite plural. There's lots. And, and could you even connect it to your car? Yep. Really? Yep. That's amazing. Telephone. So, so when you get the uh, the blue, uh, no officer, I wasn't holding my phone. It was going through my <laughs> hearing aid. <laughs> yep. That's that's crazy. I think yeah. that's great. I, I should tell, uh, I have family members that are going to tell about that. You should. All yeah. right. So we have the trouble with trouble. That's yes. the that's the kind of getting older, losing the trouble. And that's, First thing yep. to go. The other one is just Noise too induced. much exposure. Yes. Right? And that also causes treble hearing loss. Yeah. That's like causing age-related hearing loss before your time. Mm -hmm. And the sad thing about noise-induced loss is it's almost 100% preventable. I mean, we don't stare at the sun because you know you're going to burn out your eyes. Mm -hmm. But somehow people think that the ear is impervious to the ravages of noise. Mm -hmm. I mean, our ears were meant to hear soft voices over the crackling of a fire. We were not meant to hear the clanging of steel on steel. The Industrial Revolution it was is something mankind has created but the noise pollution as a result of it is excessively loud so what is worse uh, a sustained loud noise or one big concussion both both one big concussion you, one big concussion is called noise trauma right and that can cause permanent noise induced hearing loss further or sit similarly continuous exposure to excessive noise does the same thing. It will cause noise-induced hearing loss. I was selling a car. A guy uh, uh, comes to my house, mm -hmm. and I recognize him. He's a famous drummer for a rock band. Okay. Okay. And I start talking to him, and I start thinking, I, th I, I think I know who this is. And we start talking, and it kind of, I kind of piece it together, mm -hmm. and I know who this guy is. He had to stand right next yep. to me and turn his ear to me yep. in order to hear. Yep. Now, a drummer... Mm -hmm. uh, with those cymbals are just yep. right at the, uh, right at their ear level, crashing those cymbals mm -hmm. all the time, which are high frequency, yeah. and that's the first thing yeah. to go. I'm always imagining the drummer on that rush. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, Neil Peart, right? Yeah. yeah, it wasn't Neil Peart, by the way. It was okay. another famous <laughs> Canadian rock man. But I'll tell you off the air. But uh, the but I just think to myself, like I see these guys, and often I even asked them. I said, "You wear hearing protection," and he says, "I try to, but sometimes I forget." And you know, yeah, it's a, and uh, Pete Townsend from the Who. Yeah, he's yeah, notorious. Right? He's a spokes. He's a spokesperson for hearing loss. He has whopping noise-induced hearing loss. You oh, the one uh, ACDC, the lead singer of ACDC, mm -hmm. Australian rock band, yeah. uh, he has just had to step down as the lead singer of the band because yeah. his audiologist said, if you continue this, yeah. you will lose your hearing very quickly. Yeah. So it's he's off the road. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You can get musicians' earplugs. Yeah. Most clinics can make them for you. They'll take an, ear, an impression of your ear canals. So they have the shape, the custom shape of your ears. And then what they, those musicians' earplugs do is they plug your ears from the noise, but they still allow you to hear speech. Hmm. They allow the treble sounds to come through, so you can still hear people talking. It's not like you've got two big wads of cotton batten jammed mm -hmm. in your ears. Or those yellow foam plugs, which are great for preventing noise. But when you've got those yellow foam plugs in your ear canals, they throw the baby out with the bathwater. You can't hear people talking either. Mm -hmm. I have musicians' earplugs, you can. I have a set of headphones that yeah. I wear when I have the lawnmower yep. going. They're uh, but they're so quiet that they actually have a radio in them. <laughs> so I can listen to music... <laughs> And I get rid of all hey, the lawnmower noise. It's not. It's not wrong with that. As yeah. long as the music is, isn't cranked up to where no, I no, can. No, no. I use, just. I just yeah. hear it. Uh, you know. And I do have a problem though with my kids. Yeah. They sit there and they watch videos uh -huh. on their iPads, and they've uh -huh. got their headphones yeah. on or their earbuds uh -huh. in. And you're like, you're like, Charlie, come on, we're going. It's lunchtime. Yeah. Well, Charlie, yeah. and you're yelling, and, and they pull it out, and they're like, "Huh?" Yeah, I well, said it's time for lunch. If you if you can hear the sound coming out of someone's headphones, and you're not wearing the headphones, mm -hmm. that's a good litmus test or a rule of thumb for telling. You know what? Do you know how many decibels are actually smashing against the eardrums there? So we have a lot of listeners, obviously, here on Sea Isle, and it's uh, the show is called Boomer Life. Mm -hmm. So they're you know boomers are getting every yep. year getting older. Yep. So this sort of hearing loss that you're talking about, for the most part, they might have 
have actually suffered, right? So they've got the, the, the age-related one mm -hmm. and then the one with too yeah. much exposure. Yep. So they might be a actually advocates now to the next generation of kids or grandkids. One so would hope. what do you say to a 10 or 15-year-old that says, ah, it's okay. I, like you said, people uh -huh. don't believe it's going to no, happen. I tell them, well, do you want to have, do you want to have uh, hearing loss due to age before your time? You like but they don't. But they, but, but people say, do you want to die of cancer? And they still smoke cigarettes. Oh, so, yeah. so y in your business, mm -hmm. how do you get, how do you break that wall down? What I do, I've gone to grade six classrooms at elementary or primary schools, and I'll talk to these kids. I'll show them a video from the Canadian he Hearing Foundation, and it will show smashed inner ear hair cells that are gone now for good, kind of like a cartoon-like thing. And then I'll ask a kid to come on up and turn up his device to a, to a loudness that he likes. Yeah, put that puppy up to where you like it. And the kid does, and then I'll take a sound level meter, and I'll put it against the headphone, and I'll measure the sound output that's coming from that thing. And that is a lot like staring straight into the sun. Because it's right in it's your ear. right there. Yeah. I mean, when we had old, you, you remember, maybe you're not, you're too young. Remember the old soap? I love the way you talk. There I, you go, you like that. <laughs> well, I'm 86. <laughs> the old Sony Walkmans. No, I remember those. Okay, yeah, well, yeah. The, those, when you cranked them up, yeah. they sounded terrible. Yeah. So the distortion We're let so you bad. turn it down. Yeah. Today, we, in quotes, have overcome that problem. Mm -hmm. Well, now you can crank out 120 decibels, no problemo, with not a speck of distortion. And that's the decibel. Devil in it. Now That's I have these noise canceling. I fly a lot, yep, yep. and I have these Bose noise canceling yep. headphones, which are great because they take out all sure. of that background noise. I've had them too. Yeah. And you flying, and you're watching yep. a movie on the plane, yep. and you get to hear the movie a little That's bit right. better. Yeah. Now, with the overcompensating of the background noise and the cancellation, I pr they probably are pretty loud, aren't mm -hmm. they? No, they're canceling it out. No, but I mean, even even then, do you so you think that's better? Oh yeah, way you, better. You think oh, those are much, good? Oh, much much better, because the the cockpit or the noise from from surrounding you in the airplane mm -hmm. is coming through your coming underneath your headphones and into your ear canals. Right. But the the headphones are making an opposite phase right. sound wave that's canceling out that noise, and then just the speaker's voice from the movie is coming at you, and that's so the noise is canceled out. And you're just getting the, the voice of, of that you want to hear, and no ma depending on how loud you've cranked that up to, the level of cutoff is 85 decibels. So does that technology available in hearing aids, this noise canceling technology? Mm, well, there's noise cancellation, but it's meant to cancel out background noise that competes with you hearing speech. Right. So the same kind of thing, but it's just a different source, right? Yeah, and, and, and they can't totally cancel out background noise hearing aids, but they can really help toward it. But no, I mean, the devices that, the best thing you can do to prevent noise-induced hearing loss is to wear earplugs. I mean, it's just to give yourself an artificial hearing loss on purpose. Put a plug in your ear because mm -hmm. you have to because you're going to get it and it's, it's going to cause high-pitch hearing loss just like elderly presbycusis hearing loss. And you're 19 years old and you're having trouble hearing women who have high voices, kids with high voices. So that whole thing about husbands have learned to tune out the frequency of their wives uh, is really just because we're losing our hearing? <laughs> you know what? I have a feeling it's more I can hear. I, I can hear. I'm just not listening. <laughs> and the wives would agree. Yeah, I'm sure they would. <laughs> Most do. All right. We're talking with uh, uh, audiologist Dr. Ted Venema. And we will continue the conversation. We haven't even gotten into all of the uh, parts of the ear because you talked about losing mm -hmm. those little fibers inside mm -hmm. your ear. So we'll actually talk yeah, about that. Yeah, let's talk about that. We'll talk yeah. about that when we come back next on Boomer Life here on CL650. Celebrating the baby boomer lifestyle. This is Boomer Life on CL650.